depending on the outcome. There were jobs in science and bureaucracy, there was the renewables industry, there were profits in, carbon, in trading carbon credits, there were political careers, there was government control over energy use, and there was the possibility of world government. So, rather than admit that they were wrong in the mid-1990s, the governments and their climate scientists now outrageously maintain the fiction that carbon dioxide is a dangerous pollutant. Let's be perfectly clear, carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. Every bit of carbon dioxide we emit does warm the planet a little bit. But the question is not whether or not carbon dioxide warms the planet. No, the question is how much. Most scientists on both sides of this issue actually agree on how much a given increase in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere raises the temperature of the planet if just the carbon dioxide, extra carbon dioxide is considered. These calculations come from lab experiments. The physics is well known, has been for over a century. That's not controversial. The disagreement comes about what happens next. You see, that extra carbon dioxide causes some warming and that changes everything. Most critically, the extra warmth causes more water to evaporate from the oceans. But here's the choice. Does that water, A, hang around and thicken the blanket of moist air around the planet, or does it, B, simply create more clouds and rain? Back in 1980, when the carbon dioxide theory started, no one knew. The alarmists guessed that it would increase the height of moist air around the planet, which would keep the planet even, or should warm the planet even further, because moist air is the main greenhouse gas keeping the planet warm. This is the core idea of every government official climate model. For every bit of warming due to extra carbon dioxide, there are two bits of warming due to extra moist air. Their models, the climate models, amplify the warming of carbon dioxide by a factor of three. Joanne showed you that graph, amplification by a factor of three. Two thirds of their temperature projections are not directly due to carbon dioxide, they're due to moist air. I guess about moist air. That's the core of the issue. You see, the alarmist case is, best, is based mainly on this guess about moisture in the atmosphere, which produces frightening global warming in their models. In reality, there is simply no evidence for this amplification. And there never was any such evidence. It was simply assumed to be true, and they expected to find the evidence later. Well, later arrived, around about 1995. You see, weather balloons have been measured in the atmosphere since the 1960s, many, many thousands of them every year. The climate models all predict that as the planet warms due to extra carbon dioxide, a hot spot of moist air will develop over the tropics about 10 kilometres up as the layer of moist warm air expands into a volume that was previously occupied by cold, dry air. During the warming of the late 70s, the 1980s and the 1990s, the weather balloons found no hot spot. Not even a small one. It just wasn't one. And this evidence proves, proves that the climate models are fundamentally flawed and that the climate scientists, the government climate scientists, are exaggerating the dangers of carbon dioxide. Now, as I said, this evidence first became clear around the mid-90s. At this point, official climate science stopped being a science. Because in science, empirical evidence always trumps theory, no matter how much you're in love with your theory. If theory and evidence disagree, between due to the extra carbon dioxide, by dampening, not amplifying, that warming, every long-lived natural system behaves this way, counteracting any disturbance. Otherwise, the system would be unstable. Eventually, it would blow up. We'd have a climate like Venus. The climate system, is, like any other natural system, has mainly negative feedback. And now, we can prove it. But the alarmists deny all this new evidence. They say the exact opposite, that the climate system amplifies any warming due to extra carbon dioxide and is potentially unstable. You've all heard about the tipping point, right? That's what they're talking about. It is no surprise, therefore, that their early predictions on 
the earliest ones are the best because they've had the longest to run, their predictions of planetary temperature made in 1998 proved much higher than subsequent reality. We'll show that evidence in a moment. So their models are also failing the crucial te tests of predicting temperatures. The government climate, si climate scientist has selectively denied evidence and now they're concealing the truth to hide the failure of their theory. One way they conceal is to mismeasure the temperature. The official thermometers are often near artificial heating sources. Global warming is measured in tenths of a degree, so any little nudge to those thermometers is pretty significant. The misrepresentation here is that they use selected thermometers in artificially warming locations and they call the results global warming. They say that 2010 was the warmest recent year, but this was only true at various airports, near selected air conditioners, and in certain car parks. <laughs> global warming is also measured by satellites, which measure the whole planet 24-7 without bias. The satellites say that the hottest re recent year was two uh, 1998, and that since 2001, the global temperature has basically leveled off. So, it's a question of trust. Why does the Western climate establishment present only the surface thermometer results and not mention the satellite results? And why do they put their to a, they use thermometers near artificial heating sources? This is so obviously a scam now. The Earth has been in a warming trend since the depth of the Little Ice Age, a little over 300 years ago, in about 1680. But human emissions of carbon dioxide were negligible before 1850, and they nearly all come with post-World War II industrialization. So human carbon dioxide can't possibly have started this trend or even sustained it for most of its length. Within the trend, the Pacific Decadal Oscillation causes alternating global warming and cooling about 25 to 30 years ago in each direction. We've just finished a warming phase a few years ago. So, if the pattern continues, we're probably going to have about two decades now of mild planetary cooling. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now at an extraordinary juncture. <coughs> Official Western climate science, which is funded and directed entirely by Western governments, promotes a theory based on a guess about moist air that is now a known falsehood. Governments gleefully accept their advice because the only way to curb emissions are to impose taxes and extend government control over all energy use. And to enforce emission reduction worldwide means dictating energy use in every country, which would quickly lead to world government. How exciting for our governing class. To those of you who still think that the planet is in danger from our carbon dioxide emissions, sorry, but you've been had. Yes, carbon dioxide does cause global warming, but no, it's only a minor cause and it's not worth doing anything about. Now, I get about 20 minutes publicly once or twice a year to point out some of the evidence that carbon dioxide is not so bad. I shouldn't have to do this. The press should do it. It's, it's not as if the information is hidden. It's out there on the internet and it's also in the peer-reviewed literature. But the web mainstream media and our Western governments are apparently too gullible or too unwilling to join the dots. So let's move along and look at some of the evidence. Uh, we skeptics who understand the science, we know that the, the government climate scientists are concealing and evading and misrepresenting big time to conceal the failure of their theory. And the alarmists have had years to make their case to every orifice of the media and government. We skeptics rarely get more than a few minutes to present our case. So we had to quickly we have to quickly present a few issues that prevent, sorry, provide pretty big clues to the layperson. <coughs> so let's start with the corrupt thermometers. Oh yes, here's a thermometer right in the middle of that screen. It's measuring that car park and the use of that air conditioner. This is a real poster child of the bad thermometer movement. There's a thermometer, there's big air conditioners, there's windbreaks, there's tarmac and so on. When Anthony Watch started distributing this, this photo around the web, the other side actually had enough nows to remove this thermometer from the official record, from the official temperature record from then on. However, they left its, its readings from the past in the records. 